Hello, friends. I'll wait here a second for other people to join us. All right, a second's up. <laughs> Hello, Karen. So this is Daily Art Adventure number 729. Woohoo! Pen and ink cross hatching. Back to my first love. That's pretty true, actually. I'm in my uh, back home from the beach. We had a great time, but it's great to be home. Back upstairs in my studio with the door closed against uh, the various and sundry noises of four grandchildren <laughs> who we love <laughs> and we love having here. But there's a time for quiet. <laughs> this is it. All right, let's get to work. Let me show you what I've got here. So I'm doing a cross hatching illustrations. By the way, this, this, uh, hello, Horatio, AKA Uncle Sixty. The rest of the, hi, Monique. Glad that you're catching me before you go to bed. Hello, David Mercer. Good to have you on board. Um, I was contacted several weeks ago by an advertising agency in Brooklyn, I think, New York. And uh, they wanted a pen and ink illustration, three actually. And uh, this is a, an image printed from my website. If you go to Dan Nelson Art, click on illustrations, and inside illustration, the illustration page, there's an album called Pen and Ink. So this, this helped get us started. Just for those of you who are not familiar with the, the world of uh, illustration, here's a little bit the way it works. Um, they wanted a treescape. So I sent them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. I sent them eight very quick sketches. Do you want it like this, 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 and so on and so forth. And they actually came back to me and said, no, make it more like the, the comp that we sent to you. So I said, okay, how about like this? And then I got some other comments. I can't remember what they were. And then, um, then I said, okay, what style are we going to do? And I. I uh, did a part of it, a part of the illustration in a fairly detailed pen and ink technique and they came back, it was a little unclear for a while what they wanted, but no, they didn't want it this detailed. So again, that's, that's what we do this for. So then I sent them, <laughs> how about stippling? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be crazy to do cross hatching. You have to be insane to do stippling. And everybody who's done it knows that's true. I, 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 I've done a fair amount. Anyway, this was the last sketch that I sent them. Here's a, a sample of the technique that I'm going to imitate. So I hope you can see the, the correlation between, say, this off my website and this. And then they want part of the illustration. This is different. This is very different. They want part of it to be detailed, then less detailed, then more detailed. I don't know if they're going to put text or you know something in front of this. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, they basically approved of this, right? So just one more thing to show you. Then um, I came home to my studio and I took that last sketch and I put it on my computer and I printed it out on my printer at just the right size. It goes across three pieces of paper. Okay, so all this, these yellow, these yellow, these pink lines indicate where I'm supposed to transition to a looser technique and then back to tighter again. Okay, so as you can see, I will be working on my trusty old light table. And boy, it is old. I bought this light table in... <laughs> Hello, Reba. Reba. Yeah, uh, Ray, Mondo. Yes, you are <laughs> insane. <laughs> yes, you are. Bless you. My, uh, You have my undying admiration and respect. Um, anybody that can do uh, stippling or pointillism is, has my respect. All right. So let me show you that again. So here's what this illustration looks, what the paper looks like. And then I turn on a light table, right? And then I can trace. I'm drawing on coated paper, or if you go to the, 
a print shop, which is actually where I bought this paper from. If you go to a printing company and say, I want to print a brochure and I want it to be shiny, you want your, your brochure to be on shiny paper, this is the kind of paper that they that they printed on. Okay, the reason I'm doing it is because it uh, uh, coated, it's either ena it could be called enamel paper or clay coated paper. All those words refer to the same thing. Coated, enamel coated, clay coated, or just plain old shiny, <laughs> shiny paper. Um, they all refer to this kind of paper. And part of the reason I'm using it is, first of all, the lines, the ink lines um, are very clean which is what I think my client wants for this job. And more importantly, because I'm working on a coated or clay coated paper, I can actually take a tool like this, which is a scratch board tool, and I can scratch the ink lines off. You'll see me do some of that later on as I go along. So that's about all I have to say. <laughs> All the rest is just plain old scratching. Now this obviously is, by the way, um, this job will not create any ASMR stimulation for the precise reason that the paper is smooth. So even if I turned off my music that is playing quietly in the background, you would not hear. Maybe I should do it with my mouth. How about that? How about some fake ASMR? <laughs> some of you don't know what I'm talking about. When I am I saying the right letters? ASMR, AMSR, ASMR. Anyway, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. And the fact is, even by going. it would create actual ASMR. <laughs> Forgive me, am I saying the right words? Median auditory response, uh, uh, I forget stimulation, anyway. <laughs> anyway, my paper is perfectly silent, so I'm sorry, any of those, any of you who came to this video hoping for an auditory buzz. I'm very sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> I am <laughs> I have run <laughs> I have one request <laughs> to make the noises. You know if now if you guys would just be quiet <laughs> and don't let our little secret out <laughs> <laughs> then everybody that tunes in from this point on could be fooled. <laughs> and I am kidding. I... <laughs> I cannot live with that level of deception. I, that's just too funny. Once my music's, hang on, I gotta turn the music down. Oh, it, it, it's, it's escaping from background music to foreground and that, that's no good. There we go. All right, so as you can see, I have just started um, real cross hatching. <laughs> you did indeed make me laugh. <laughs> Thank you. That is funny. All right. So if the, if it's not if the cross hatching just goes in one direction, then is it cross hatching or is it just hatching? <laughs> and I think it's just hatching. Now, the technique that I'm going to employ
employ with this illustration is it's going to include a modicum <laughs> there. Those of you who are <laughs> English is your second language, I'm really putting the test on you here. Modicum means a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to employ a modicum of <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be easy on you. I'm going to employ a little bit of outlining. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, And yes, it is quite, uh, what's the word, unconventional to do the cross-hatching first and do the outline second. Most people would do the outlining first and then do the cross-hatching. So there you go. Once again, Dan Nelson turns out not to be like most people. Actually, I, I, I certainly usually do it the other way. Outline first and then and then the shading. But in this particular illustration I'm going to be going both directions. That is to say, in this illustration, sometimes I will do the outline first and then do the cross hatching. At other times, I'll do the cross hatching first or the shading first and then do the outline. Why? Variety! Vari not, I don't mean, and what I mean there is variety of the look will be varied. I'm not talking about variety of technique, although it is that, but the reason for the variety and technique is for a variety of look, because it will look slightly different if I do the outline first. Oh, there's a good comment about David James Gurney. <laughs> yeah, when am, when am I going to do a gouache painting? Well, that's funny you should ask. David, there's one right there. Were you, were you with me a couple months ago? Um, this is a comp that is a comprehensive, an idea uh, gouache painting for uh, an oil painting class that I'm going to teach in December here at Jar Jerry's Artorama at our wonderful local art supply store. Um, it's going to be oil on aluminum. I know, I don't know if I'm going to going to get any students for that class, but uh, that's what that sketch was for. So, yeah, I love gouache, David, and I did that, I don't know, a couple months ago. I don't know, I don't remember what Daily Art Adventure number it was, but in fact, I, and I talked about James Gurney uh, when I did it. <laughs> I love, I love watching James Gurney, but it always makes me laugh so hard. I mean, I mean, he's a phenomenal artist, of course. I'm not laughing at his skill, my goodness. No, I, I, I like all the rest of you, I drool over his skill. <laughs> but it just kills me that he does tiny, tiny little, you know, four by six inch illustrations, really, on plein air in, in gouache. What a hoot. Whoops, sorry, hang on. I know I'm off camera just a second. Sorry about that. Okay, let's turn the turn the light back on and get back to work. Um couple thoughts about cross hatching. It's a little bit like doing calligraphy in this respect. You have to be relaxed. There, I'll do a little ASMR whispering. How about that? You have to be relaxed when you're doing cross hatching. Otherwise, your lines will get all cattywampus. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful Texan word meaning crooked or off. Cattywampus. Isn't that hilarious? Anyway, so even though I'm talking to you guys and you guys are disturbing me greatly <laughs> I 
as usual. <laughs> I have to keep myself relaxed. Otherwise, my lines start going bad. Now, let, let, let me talk a little bit more. Um, some of you know this. Perhaps some of you, even some of you regulars, I don't know, you may not know this, that out of all my thousand plus videos that I have on YouTube, just one of them has really gone viral. And that one, I published it in 2013. And that one, um, viral video is about cross edging. So some of you know that that that's how most people find me. And then after they f and then they subscribe because they loved <laughs> they loved my cross hatching <laughs> technique. And then with great dismay <laughs> they discover that the great majority of my videos are about oil painting. <laughs> so I have I think the last time I counted, nearly 59,000 subscribers, which is a very good number. But very few of them watch me. <laughs> because, alas, false advertising. They went away in disgust <laughs> after watching, after getting notified that I'm uploading a new video. And they go, what? Oil painting? <laughs> I didn't sign up for oil painting. <laughs> I signed up for pen and ink cross hatching. And so... Uh, my subscription numbers are way overinflated, or to put it the other way around, my viewership <laughs> is greatly curtailed <laughs> by the fact that I, without meaning to, I committed a grave YouTube faux pas. <laughs> F A U X P A S. <laughs> For you Anglophones. David got that one faux pas. <laughs> it's French. <laughs> anyway, I committed the faux pas, which is, you know, advertising one thing and delivering something else entirely. Anyway, I have, uh, of course, so I have, I forget, four million, nearly four million views on that one video. And, uh, I have, of course, garnered a right many comments well over a thousand comments and um, most of them are fairly complimentary <laughs> but of course <laughs> there's a significant there's a significant percentage of the human population <laughs> that evidently just doesn't feel like it's had a good day until it can go out and trash somebody <laughs> So I have a good number of very negative comments on my cross hedging video. <laughs> Some of which, the ones that contain obscenities and uh, and other such things, cursing, I I do take the liberty of uh, deleting them on occasion. Not all the negative ones, but the the ones that are just over the top. Anyway, one of the things that I have not deleted. <laughs> As many people have scorned me, <laughs> reviled me deeply, <laughs> because my cross hatching technique is so stiff, shall we say, that it's so straight lined. And uh, many of these people have mentioned the names of other very, very famous. No, I do not get five cent per view, boy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? I would love a penny per view. It would be fantastic. No, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's a pretty low number. Um, anyway, on, uh, people have criticized my straight line cross hatching. Now a great many other people of course have complimented me highly but uh, I, I do want to say that this approach, my this 
my native tech cross hatching technique and I by the way I, I do many can do and have done many different styles of cross hatching so this is not my only but it is indeed the, the most popular it is what I um, come back to most often it's a straight line and fairly rigid geometrical just as you see me doing right here all of my first layer is all the entire illustration the lines are going to go this way and the second layer they're all going to go this way okay and that evidently that really irritates <laughs> some people <laughs> I'm sorry to ruin their day <laughs> that's not cross hatching this is childish you have no skill whatsoever <laughs> I've gotten so much of that. It's hilarious. Anyway, so first of all, in my defense, <laughs> never defend yourself against trolls. It just never, it just goes down the hole from there. <laughs> um, be that as it may, in my defense, <laughs> I do many different kinds. As I just said, I do many different styles of cross hatching. This is just one, uh, but it is my most common. And in my defense, I do it not because I, can, I can't do something else, but it turns out that just my little brain, and I'll go ahead and admit that it's little, that's fine, entertained by little things. Um, I Let me turn the, t the light table off for a minute. So it turns out I just get a kick. My little brain <laughs> gets a kick out of turning these... <laughs> very straight rigid this 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 uh, rigid approach to cross hatching turns into a, a balsam tree that that's just that just tickles me in fact and for you for you regulars who watch me normally watch me paint you you know i say first half of <clears throat> first half of our art journey we learn how to paint stuff that looks like stuff second half of our art journey all uh, uh, all the abstract elements of the adventure of the journey come to the fore that is to say all the abstract issues of painting take precedence over the picture elements and uh, now when I come back to my good old-fashioned, again, what I would call my native, let's see if I can get the light better here for you guys, my native illustration technique, which is pen and ink cross-hatching, um, lo and behold, um, I, I've had this same kind of journey in my pen and ink. To me, the abstract aspect of this cross-hatching the fact that it's so rigid and so tight and so predictable it tickles my brain I just think that's really fun that I can take straight lines and um, turn them into you know something else and here's, here's the sample that uh, my client uploaded from my website and again this is a quite a loose this is way at the loose end of my my cross-hatching technique as is this um, so there you go I just I just think it's kind of fun and over the years as an illustrator um, hang on a second I'm going to pick up post-it note because I'm going to rest my hand right down on top of this so I'm using post-it notes to protect the part of the illustration. All right, now how about this? And by the way, look at my grip. How about that? So in other words, I'm I'm hold, holding the pen in the in the artistic side saddle grip, um, which eliminates the movement of my digits of my fingers, and instead relies on the movement of my entire arm. Now, for anybody out there who really does want to do some pending drawing, um, 
or pencil drawing for that matter, but sketchy drawing like this, drawing that relies heavily on um, the line. What I'm showing, I can move this a little bit. What I'm showing you right at this minute could be could be very instructive. This is one trick for rendering um, an organic shape like the shape of a tree. The trick is, let me let me explain what I just did. First of all, I drew a crooked line going this way. Then I turned around and retraced it, not retraced it, but what, going this way. Same thing here. I first drew a line going this way. Then I, I'm turning around and going the opposite direction. That helps achieve a higher degree of uh, organic chaos, spontaneity, without accidentally slipping into you know, it's hard, very, very hard for human beings to draw um, irregularity, chaos. And then, here's another trick that I often do, come back and do little bits of, of leaves that have sort of are escaping from the main body of the tree, do you see? I, I've used this technique for years, um, most especially in my uh, architectural rendering. Now, by the same token, little circles on the inside of that double line indicating what is traditionally called sky holes, but which I call tree holes. There. So now, and by the way, I just switched grips now back, back to the um, traditional you know, death control grip. And let me repeat again for those of you who perhaps just joined me. This tree that I just finished a few minutes ago, I did the cross hatching first, then came back and did the outline. Such a very, very faint outline. You can barely see it, which is the way I want it. This tree, I'm doing the outlining first and the cross hatching second. Why? And again, I already said this variety because it will have a slightly different feel uh, you, it, you can't help but be slightly different and I don't care if it, nobody no nobody out there can can tell the difference I, I, I don't expect that to be the case once again as artists we're we're impacting people at a completely no at a largely subconscious level so I'm, I'm not saying that anybody's no one would look at this drawing and say oh look at that tree he did the outline first and then shaded you know no 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 that's not that's not going to happen no 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 but i do know that by doing it two different ways i'm going to end up with a slightly different look and i don't even care if i can't tell the difference that that's not the point i just know by executing it in a couple different ways it'll end up looking slightly different. By the way, that's part of the reason this the post-it note is here is to um Hello Elk. Is that it? A L K? Yeah. Um great question. Perfect timing by the way, because I'm about to um do something with the pen. So this is called um let me show you with a cap on it. It's called pen and ink sketch. And I don't know if you can see the writing on this or not. Probably not. Hang on, let me. Almost. You can almost say it's with a script. It says pen and ink sketch right there. I know. Sorry, you can't see that. I know. Um, it's a very inexpensive fountain pen, but uh, it is the result of quite a bit of research. Actually, I've bought a lot of fairly expensive fountain pens before settling on this cheap one. And wouldn't you know it, this particular pen is uh, sold by Jerry's Artorama, my favorite local art store. All right, now, I'm right now I'm squeezing ink from the, by rotating it, there's a, there's a syringe plunger in here. By turning it, the plunger is going down and forcing ink down into the nib. That's what I'm doing right here. 
there we go so my pen is so that's the only downside of this pen I shouldn't need to do that um, but I I do need to do that all right Al asks another question what kind of paper am I working on I did mention that at the beginning but it's good to repeat it again I'm working on shiny paper the kind of paper that a printing company would use to print a brochure or a poster that's shiny so it's a kind of paper a magazine it's magazine paper there you go it's it, it's called coated or enamel or clay coated all three all three terms all three expressions refer to the same thing clay coat paper enamel paper shiny paper okay and uh, the reason for that is because it the ink lines on this are very 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 clean as opposed to for instance here's a piece of you know ordinary copy paper so when I when I draw on this y you can't see it but the it's a fuzzy paper so the edges of the line have little microscopic hairs <laughs> that, that bleed off from it and uh, with this paper there are no little tiny hairs so to speak it doesn't bleed on the paper at all the other thing that this paper allows me to do is in a little while at some point I will pick up a uh, etching tool clayboard etching tool and I can scratch through the enamel uh, to remove some of the ink and I will almost certainly be uh, utilizing that that feature of this paper later on in the process now let's see what questions have I missed any others yeah post-it notes absolutely we use them a lot and when I'm using a rapidograph, when I'm doing calligraphy, when I'm using a fountain pen like this. Ah, oh, now that, that raises a question. Uh, raises a, whoops, <laughs> I don't have my, I, most of the cross hatching that I've done all through the years, I've done with the uh, rapidograph pen. It's just Google that, rapid, rapid, o, graph sometimes mispronounced rapidiograph by people that are not very linguistically sophisticated <laughs> it's rapidograph and um, rapidographs I still use them um, but this fountain pen is first of all it's it this pen is making a fatter line than most rapidographs that I use so I'm for this particular job I'm going after um, a fairly coarse line. Not this is not this is not a f fine um, technique. This is not fine line uh, like my one video that really went viral, pen and ink cross hatching. Um, that is a very very super refined technique. This is a very coarse uh, technique compared to that. The lines are fatter. The lines are farther apart. I don't know yet whether I will come back and do a third layer of, sh of shading. I don't know. I might. I reserve the right, of course, to do that. But I'm go going to start out at least doing only two layers of cross hatching. I am envisioning in this illustration the light, the sunlight is coming from the left. So that has an impact on where I am, how I am doing the shading, where, I'm, where I am doing the shading. And in these areas, of course, you see where we can see the trunk that means there's no foliage in front of the trunk so the leaves we're seeing around the trunk are beyond that means they're in shade so therefore they're darker does that make sense I actually am thinking about the anatomy of of a tree 
while I'm drawing this. And this, this is, these are intended to be poplar trees. Anybody who has grown up in the Midwest of the United States knows poplar trees. They're widely used in the Midwest as windbreaks. They're a very fast growing tree and and they are painted they're planted often in rows uh, pr tightly close to get close together in a straight row along the edge of a field and it's uh, called a windbreak and actually literally the trees break the wind and, and uh, help the farmer uh, keep control of his crop whatever it may be down here in front of the poplar trees is a small bush of some kind and I'm I want it to appear uh, lighter lighter in color like pale green so I'm actually thinking color <laughs> while I'm doing a cross hatching in black and white. I guess I'll I guess I'll finish the first tree now the one on the right. All right, and I have just about broadcast enough of this. This is good stuff to sleep by folks. Anybody out there falling asleep, I'm glad to be of service to you. This is The only thing more monotonous than this is is stippling. <laughs> I'll finish this tree. Then I'll release you guys. Well, I'll do one I'm gonna do one bit of scratching before we go so you can see that. Now this is not to be confused with scratch board technique. Um, if this was a, a piece of clay board, then, then I would be able to uh, scratch many times. But because it's just clay coated paper, I have the luxury of exactly one scratch. <laughs> I can scratch one time, half any more than that. I will have a very unsightly scratchy mess on the paper that would not at all be attractive so I have to be very cautious with my scratching here unlike if it were a clay board again Once again, um, my particular cross-hatching technique is intentionally abstract, intentionally stiff and rigid. By no means is it the only or even the best way to do cross-hatching. It's just one way to do it. Uh, good question, Rebecca. Does this... No. Um, that's a good question. Could this paper clog your nib and at, at that may it's logical that it could for some reason it it doesn't seem to so the the clay on the paper evidently is just hard enough that that doesn't happen okay here's what I want to do I'm going to do you could you can also do this scratching 
of course with a uh, with an exacto knife That's all I'm gonna do now, just for fun, since I've got it here. I'm gonna make a few sky holes. I don't, I don't. I've already included sky holes in here, but but how about um? Let me look. Would would grass be a good idea? Oh yeah, it would be. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna turn the whole page upside down so they can do paint, scratch some grass, so to speak, quote unquote grass. All weedy strokes. Now let's look, see how that looks like right side up. Yeah. It's not bad. I'll probably do something like this. This right here, that's the trunk of the tree, not to be confused with blades of grass. And I again, I have yet to decide whether I'm going to um, do a third layer of shading. See, this the way it is right now, the illustration is fairly clean a uh, simple it's not it's not a very sophisticated technique and, and the the sample that I showed to them from my website is mostly that although there is some three or four layers stuff down here so remains to be seen I'll probably decide if I come back and do a darker layer I'll probably make that decision very late in the process Hey, Elk, thank you for that encouraging compliment. I appreciate it. All right, and honestly, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be sitting here um, for several hours. I won't even finish this job today. I'll be sitting here for several hours going scratch, 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 scratch. My wife has often said, if we had a penny for every line you'd ever drawn, we'd be millionaires. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for your fun company. I appreciate it and your fun comments. And uh, if you're a newcomer in particular, please do give me a like. Give me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I do try to respond to all, all comments that invite a response. I certainly try to answer all those. And if, I've ever, if you've done so and I've missed it, sorry. Try, try me again. I do try to get them all. Um, but anyway, good, good time here today. Um, let's see if there's any other questions I need to <laughs> yes it is about as exciting as watching as watching uh... oh David uh, going way back he says I've been watching you for three years now and tradition you got to create a Santa Claus head and I would ask you to do it in gouache please <laughs> Fair enough. I'll have to think about that, David. A Santa head in gouache. Very reasonable, very reasonable request. If I'm up to it, if I'm able, I'd be delighted. All right. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. Um, I'm debating here whether to... I think. Okay. I don't do this very often. I think here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause this broadcast. Um... That means if when I start again, those of you who are, have subscribed, you will not get a an alarm bell. You will not, won't get a notification. But uh, later on in the process, I, some of you would enjoy seeing where this goes in a couple hours from now. Actually, I don't have that much time, but an hour from now. So I'll pause it for right now. I'll keep drawing, and then I'll try to do a wrap-up later. Okay? Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.
Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me again. So it turns out I did not get nearly as much done as, uh, hey, Trabalio. Hello, Gil. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent work. I appreciate that very much. Um, I didn't get nearly as much done as I expected because I forgot I had to go and vote. <laughs> so let me show you what I've done. <laughs> I've drawn two more trees since last we spoke, which is not very much at all. So I'll, I will wrap up this broadcast here because I have to go to my monthly painters forum. You've, if you're a regular, you've heard me talk about it many times. One of my favorite meetings of the month. Some of us have been getting together for 12 years, I think. Um, so I have some, several dear friends. Hey, there is one thing I meant to show you earlier and I forgot. So I do have one illustration that I've already finished for this uh, advertising agency up in Brooklyn, New York. Um, this is an illustration, pen and ink, of uh, a pile of logs. Now, it looks much better if all the spaces between the logs are black, but um, they wanted they wanted me to do to leave it white, and they'll, they're going to fill in. Anyway, just for fun, so there's a little bit of Inktober ac action, I would say. Isn't that fun? It took, took quite a while, <laughs> as you know. Anybody, any of you who have done... Um, uh, cross hatching. Several hours of work there. Anyway, that's it. I'll, I'll say goodbye to you one more time because I went and voted. Today we have, um, we're voting, electing a mayor and city council members in Raleigh, North Carolina. May the best man or woman win. <laughs> and I'm not, I have no idea who that is. So. All right. Thanks for your chats. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye.